I love chips. But being a modern man with a packed schedule and a head full of dreams, I don't have time to make them. However, I do have time to make a cannon that fires potatoes whilst chopping them into chips, firing them directly into a deep fat fryer to make a starch based nutritious meal ready to eat in seconds. I have plenty of time for that. So today I'm going to be making a potato cannon chip chopping deep fat frying thing. Coming up in this episode, I'm going to be looking at some of the science behind a potato cannon, I'm going to be showing you how I made mine, and then I'm going to be firing it. And if you really can't wait till then, then skip forward to six and a half minutes and see the cannon in action. The first cannon was invented an incredibly long time ago by Archimedes of Syracuse in 212 BC. It used steam to propel its projectiles. However, it wasn't until the 12th century in Song, China, that the first combustion cannon was invented. But although it fired big heavy metal balls instead of potatoes, they work pretty much the same way as this one. And it's actually pretty simple. There are only really three things that you need to make a cannon work. Thing one. Back in the 12th century and for centuries after, gunpowder was used as a propellant. Not so easy to come by these days though, so I'm gonna be using a can of starter fluid. Its principal ingredient is diethyl ether, an organic compound with a very low flash point, meaning that it will ignite in low temperatures. And so it's used to start engines in very cold conditions. It is highly volatile, meaning it vaporizes easily, which has a direct link to its flammability. The more vapor, the more molecules there are flying around which react with oxygen in the air, making it burn violently. However, it has also been used as an anesthetic and also as a recreational drug due to its intoxicating effects. B2. Over the centuries, sticks, slow matches and fuse wire have all been used to ignite a cannon's propellant. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm a modern man. So to ignite my propellant, the starter fluid, I'm gonna be using this, a piezoelectric spark generator. The same kind of thing that you'd find in your home boiler or a barbecue lighter. This works as a result of a natural phenomenon whereby some materials like the quartz crystal inside the spark generator accumulate an electrical charge when compressed or struck with force. It consists of a small spring-loaded hammer which when the button is pressed hits the quartz. This sudden impact produces a high voltage and subsequent electrical discharge which travels along the wires creating a tiny spark at the end which ignites the gas. And fun fact, fun fact. quartz is the second most abundant material in the Earth's continental crust. Now that's the bit just underneath the land and is used for all sorts of applications from ultrasound devices to mobile phones and even atomic clocks. In fact, I made a video about how atomic clocks work which you can find somewhere here. Three. Now, a fairly important part of a cannon is, of course, the cannon bit. To make mine, I use the following. A 600mm long piece of 110mm diameter plastic pipe for the combustion chamber, a 1500mm long piece of 50mm diameter pipe for the barrel, and a reducer to join the two together. You'll also need a 110mm screw-on access cap to seal the combustion chamber, and a coupler to join them. And crucially, you'll need solvent cement to weld the whole thing together. Now, all of this will slot together really quite easily, but when it fires, it's gonna be under some pretty intense pressure. So we need to secure all the joints so it doesn't blow up in my face. To do this, I'm gonna start by cleaning all the joints and then applying solvent cement. Now, don't be fooled by the name. It's not really cement and it's not glue either. In fact, in the building industry, they actually call this solvent welding. When you weld metal, you melt two pieces together so that when it cools and hardens, it becomes a single piece, creating a very strong bond. A similar thing is happening when you solvent weld two plastic pipes. The solvent penetrates the surfaces, causing them to soften and swell, temporarily dissolving the polymer chains of the plastic. Solvents are liquid, and so they evaporate. As they do, the polymer chains from both the plastic pipe and the part you're joining are entangled, and so form a solid weld, and technically become one and the same piece of plastic. So all the joints are cemented, and we have our basic potato cannon. The next thing I need to do is add the piezoelectric igniter, which is gonna ignite the starter fluid inside the combustion chamber. 
I measured out and drilled holes for two bolts which I'm connecting to the piezo spark generator. This way I can create the spark inside the barrel and using the bolts makes it really robust. I used a large washer as a spacer to ensure the spark happens inside the chamber instead of between the bolt heads on the outside. So here we go, I'm very excited, my very first potato cannon, the potato -nator. Uh I've added a couple of extra bits, handle, I've added a sight here, and I've also sanded the end of the barrel so that when you load the potato, it actually cuts the potato a lot easier, making it easier to load. But come on, you didn't come here to learn that. You came here to watch a potato being turned into chips at nearly a million miles an hour. So did I. Before you use your potato cannon, please remember it's not a toy. Do not aim it at anything you do not want to kill or destroy. And always wear protective clothing when out in the field. Okay? I think we can call that a success, but I think we're missing something. After all, I promised Phil, my cameraman, some chips. The term deep frying only came about in the 19th century, but the practice has been around for millennia. Even the Egyptians were doing it, although they probably wouldn't have done if they knew how bad it was for you. For example, a large baked potato contains 220 calories and less than a gram of fat. But take that potato and turn it into french fries, you end up with nearly 700 calories and a whopping 34 grams of fat. Yum. Well, I can't believe how well that worked. The chips are perfect. We've just got to get them in the actual fryer this time. Let's go again. So, what have we learned? We've learned how a cannon works, and we've learned that cannons don't make fantastic chips. Two essential life lessons. And if you want to see more videos about potatoes and science, then check out this playlist, made by a bunch of other awesome people who love science and potatoes. Until next time, I've been Dom, and you've been watching everything. It's not done.